Photography can and will destroy your life and there's a really good reason for it. And just to give you full context, in becoming a photographer, I have lost many relationships, many friends, many hairs, and at least the ones I have left have lost their colour. I've lost a lot of things outside of having achieved in photography. And there's a really good reason why, well, there's several actually, and I'm going to go through them, hopefully to make you go, well, yes, actually, this will be worth my sacrifice. Or perhaps you go, do you know what? I just want a normal life. And yes, the last one will explain that in great detail to you. Now, the problem with photography and photographers, and this is anecdotal, I have no stats to back this up. We're a certain breed of person. We like facts. And I know this from the comment section below, because whenever I give a grey answer or a contradicting answer, people get furious. We like facts. And in photography on the internet, there's a lot of facts. There's statistics, there's numbers, there's dynamic ranges, lens sharpness characteristics and ratings and all this stuff we can fixate on. I lost a job because they discovered that the majority of my working day, I spent browsing photography forums. Did it make me a better photographer? No, 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 absolutely not. If anything, it made me slightly worse, but I was obsessed with it to the point where I couldn't work. Now, the problem is, and the solution to that is, you don't need to learn about cameras and kit. There's a very small amount of technical knowledge you need to learn. You can probably learn it in a week if you get taught it correctly. But what you do need to learn about is your subject matter, and you need to know your subject matter better than someone who does the subject matter for a job and be able to photograph it. Knowing your subject matter is actually what you should be focusing on. But we all go down this other rabbit hole of camera stuff, gear stuff. Now, I think the reason for this, and I'm, I'm pretty confident on my answer for this, I think the reason for this is that a lot of photographers I meet come into this later in life. And I'm not talking about at 40, 50 years of old age. I'm talking that they studied one thing and then moved over. And we feel that we have to catch up. We feel that we have a lot of ground to make up because we've spent, I mean, I did a degree in sports science and a master's in health related physiology. Then I became a photographer and I felt like I've got to get my five years worth of studying in to, to learn all of this stuff that somebody who did a master's in photography did. Thing is though, I don't really know any successful photographers with degrees in photography because like I've said before, what we need to understand well is our subject matter, not the camera. Cameras are simple tools. Cameras are made like the average camera, like an SLR or mirrorless, it's the same sort of thing, but like lens focusing front and back, it's pretty straightforward. Sure, if you can use a technical camera like mine, you probably need a few more weeks of education on it, but it's not rocket science. You know, there's harder things. I mean, I find it harder starting at my computer than using a camera. So we, we feel this need to catch up. And, and that is why I think a lot of us bury ourselves in all this, like all this kit and tech out there that we need to learn about. And obviously by the time you're successful, you realize that it was completely pointless, but we fall into that trap. And because of that, if you've got a day job, you get home, you ignore your partner, you're on the laptop, you're on your phone, you're scrolling, you're reading, you're on forums, you're on websites, you're, whatever it may be, you're watching my YouTube videos, which is probably not helping you as much as you think it is. They are helpful, <laughs> don't click off. But we get like a sense of accomplishment just by listening to this. Like, oh, I've done something today. You have not. What you've got to do is listen to this, then do the thing. This is the entertainment. This is the fun bit. What you do with this information is the work. So there's a lot of that catching up, having all this information and tech and not helped by the fact that every photographer on the internet talks like a nerd. They talk in tech. They talk in language that nobody understands and then you go and speak to an actual professional photographer and they're nothing like that you know i recently saw a comment saying how horrible other photographers are and how they're all like these vile i don't know any horrible photographers no that's not true i know two i know two they're absolute but i know two i know more horrible people outside of photography than i do in photography most photographers I meet are lovely people. I regularly lend my stuff out to my photography pals, or not even pals, but like someone will phone me up going, Scott, my shoot's gone wrong, we've knocked a camera down. I'm like, no worries, I'll pop one in a taxi for you. You know, can I borrow this? Of course you can. And likewise, if I say, oh, can you come and help me on this for the day? Someone's like, yeah, sure, I'll come and help you out. Everyone's lovely, but internet forum people, not the one. Now, the actual reason, the, the, the nuts and bolts as to why this often ruins people's lives, Photography is a hellishly cool career to have. It is a cool job to have. People are interested at the dinner table when you're like, I've just shot this campaign or I've just been out with these famous people. It's a cool job. Not only is it cool, but the pay is very high. It's extremely lucrative. How many people make 20 grand in a day's work? 
Not many. It's cool. It's high paying. Because of this, it's highly sought after as a career. I, coming from a sporting background, see it as elite sport. To be at the top, you have to ruin your life. You have to hit self-destruct on anything else in your life. Relationships, work-life balance, I don't think so. No one's having work-life balance and then getting paid 20 grand for a day's work. That's not happening. Work-life balance gets you a nine to five as an office assistant. That's work-life balance. Photography is not balanced. It's not healthy. I don't think it's particularly suitable to most personality types. And the fact that it's suitable to my personality type tells you everything you need to know about personality flaws I probably have. You have to be able to work harder than anybody else. I see it as trying to get into the Premier League in football, for those in football, soccer if you're American, American football, whatever it is, basketball. If you want to play in one of these, and yes, I know we don't make that much money compared to them, but it's it's the same competition. If you want to be at that level, you've got to compete at that level. And to compete at that level, your life is going to suffer. Once you get to that level, you have choices. You can keep going and you can keep pushing, or you can do what I do and start to bring about a work-life balance. Now, I can't have a true work-life balance. I don't have time for friendships as much because I have children. If I want time with the children, I can't go and hang out with my mates. That can't happen. Now, of course, now and again, I do hang out with them. I don't like completely recluse myself, but it's not weekly. It's often not monthly because to work as hard as I need to work to live the life I want to live as a creative, I don't have that time. Or if I do that, I can't have children. And that's the trade-off, you know, and, and it's difficult. It's hard. And you have to make these sacrifices. There's loads of things I'd love to do. I'd love to go for a run every morning. I don't have time. I'd love to go to a gym, which is nice, not the gym I go to, but the nice gym's further away and I don't have time. I'd love to go and hang out with my mates in the pub on a Friday night. I don't have time. There's so many things I'd love to go and do. I'd like to go do sporting events at the weekend, go and run cross country races. I don't have time. I have to go, what do I want out of life? What's most important? Prioritize it. I could do two things. I've got work and I've got family and that's it. If I do three things, my work will drop off. And because of that, I won't have my career. And I'll be one of the photographers moaning that I don't get to do the thing I want to do. And I'm not going to be that person. So you have to make these choices. You have to make these sacrifices. There is no work-life balance. If you want to be a commercial photographer, you've got to have a work-work balance, I'm afraid. Um, unless you happen to be insanely talented and well-connected from day one. But you're not. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.